Well, we won't need five. And we'll just use y, y values one and two. It's going to look really similar to that graph we were using for the one-sided limits. So we'll have the point one. I'll fill in the solid points now, and I'll say them as I go. So we have the one one point, the two two point, the three two point and the four one point. And now I'll fill in the missing, the holes in the graph. There'll be a hole at two, one, and another hole at four, two. And now I'm going to carefully connect these together. So there is our graph. So let's write down the, uh, this is the graph of y equals f of x. And let's write the uh, domain down. This is everything that is written down is the entire graph. There's no arrows going off to the sides. So what is the domain of f? Just looking at this graph. Zero to four. Now I have to decide open or closed at zero. And it's supposed to be a filled in all the way dot. Close to zero, and how about four? Close, because I can plug four in and get out one. Not closed because of this one at the top, but closed because of the one underneath it. Zero, four, close, closed. All right. So given looking at this domain, there is what we call interior x values and boundary x values. So just using intuition, what do you think the boundary x values are? So what are what numbers? Zero. Zero and four are what we call the boundaries. And the interior are everything that's not a boundary point. So our boundary boundary So they call these battery points. I don't think that's necessarily the best. Battery is a good word, but point's not the best word. Uh, so battery points. So I'm going to list them here, and then we'll define them below. Uh, let me put quotes around points. So one of them is x equals 0, and the other one is x equals 4. And the other ones are called interior points. Quotes around points. I think they're better called x values than points. All right, so how many interior points are there? Hint, there's more than two. There's more than three also. There's an infinite number. So every x value that's in between zero and four. So I can't list them. So I will write, now are there any actual points missing between 0 and 4 in our domain? We said we we're a little haphazard, but luckily every hole that is in the graph is filled by some, the three holes that are in the graph are filled by points. So I could write interior points is any x in the interval 0 to 4, but we go open on the ends. So there's any x between 0 and 4, not including the ends. So there's boundary points, interior points. So we'll write down a definition of these two. Now, whenever you talk about a boundary point, it needs to be of some function. Doesn't make sense to talk about a boundary point if you don't have some function to look at. So boundary point of this function is any x in the domain. So you have to be in the domain. If you're not in the domain, uh, you really have nothing to do with that function. So 
if you're in the domain and So what separates, if we think about this boundary versus interior points, our domain is very easy to graph. You just go 0 to 4. So any x value, set any x value between 0 and 4 should be an interior point. So what do x values between 0 and 4 have? What property do they have that the actual x value 0 and the x value 4 does not have. So what property does this, let's go green for interior. What property do those green points have that these blue points do not have? So how would we describe this? So we have some intuition on the blue ones being on the edge or the boundary. That's why we call them boundary points. But what property, mathematically, do they have that separates the blues from the greens? So here, what's that? Well, they all have. They all have this function. Every, all these four points, I put down these four x values, I shouldn't really call them points. Uh, these four x values are in the domain. So they all have y values. So the problem is not whether you have a y value or not. So they all have y values. But if we look, what we can do around points that are on the interior, we create what's called a neighborhood. So you could think of this as basically a small uh, circle or sphere, or if it works better for you, what it really is is an interval that the interior points, you can create an interval or a little bubble around them, and that this interval is still inside the domain. So that's the key to interior points. So that first green point, I can make a lot bigger neighborhood. I don't have to make this small one. I could go way out to here and say, hey, that's still inside the domain right there. But usually we consider this a smaller, a smaller neighborhood around there. And you, you can very well just think of, there's a little basically circle around it or a bubble around it. So what if you have like one of those points and you do the domain on the on the outside like this, but the point is really close to the edge and the other side of the domain goes outside. Oh, so that's a good question. So we're about to zoom in a little further. So this green point is sort of close to the edge, but it's not at the edge. No matter how as long as it's not at the edge, all I have to do is basically just say whatever this distance is right here just make my neighborhood half that wide, or any 90% that wide, however you want to think, just less than that amount. So I'll just make the, it gets very small, but I still have some amount to go over either direction. So even if we're close, as long as we're not equal, I can just move half that amount over. So the points that are close to the edge have a super tiny neighborhood around them. So interior points have this, what we call a neighborhood around them. And no matter how close you get, you can build this neighborhood. Now I'm going to switch to, let's go to red. Will this show up nicely? All right. What is different about building this neighborhood around a boundary point? So this neighborhood I built on the left side, I did write it in red, but I did that for a important reason. Yeah, that left side is not inside the domain. And I can do the same thing if I go over to the right. No matter how small I make this, even if it's super tiny, I'm going to leave the domain on one side. So whether it's on the right side or left side, um, no matter how small I make the neighborhood, part of it's going to stick out of the domain. So now we're going to write this idea uh, formally into a definition. Oh yeah, I mean, there's, so next to, next to every point, there's another point. Or another way to think about it, between any two, so between these two green points, there's another point inside the domain. And between any two points you're thinking of, there's still another point in here. There's still another point in here. So no matter what, there's going to be infinite numbers of points inside every single, the neighborhood of every interior point. <coughs> 
So if you zoomed in far enough to any of these neighborhoods, there's an infinite number of domain points inside. So there's definitely way more than, there's an infinite number of I interior points inside every neighbor interior neighborhood. So there's tons of overlap, basically. All right, so we have our intuition out of the way. Let's go finish this definition. So to be a battery point, so you have to be in the domain and any neighborhood around X and we'll call this Let's call this B, it's centered at X, and the radius is epsilon. We'll write it like this, and I'll define that in a, in a minute here. So any neighborhood contains X values not in the domain of F. So no matter, it says any neighborhood, no matter how small you make it, you're going to have points not in the domain of F. So that's what it takes to be a battery point. And now I should define neighborhood. Ooh, neighborhood. I before E. Is it N-E-I or N-I-E? You're right. This is right? Oh, I got lucky. So you no problem with a double O there. Neighborhood. So we're going to write it as B X Epsilon. And this we could write it as a set. And so it could be any real number with the property that X minus Y is less than Epsilon. Or, if we don't like inequalities, and we write interval notation, it is X minus Epsilon, X plus Epsilon. So you're centered at X, and you can go Epsilon to the right, Epsilon to the left. So this is just like the inequality we saw from the uh, definition of a limit where you have some inequalities less than epsilon means those two numbers are close together. And we somewhere up here, we chose x, so x is the center. And of course, you can draw it out on a number line. x is the center. And we go epsilon one direction, epsilon the other direction. And this creates our neighborhood right here. So that's what it looks like if you draw it out on a number line. So it's the same, uh, the same idea we had before with limit, definition of a limit. And the reason we use the letter B is because you can think of it as a either a circle, sphere, or B, we just call it a ball centered at X with a radius epsilon. So it's technically a one-dimensional uh, circle or sphere. We're used to two-dimensional circles. You can get a three-dimensional circle called a sphere, and there's four-dimensional uh, circle. I don't know what the name of that is, but so you can have these at any uh, any dimension. So there's neighborhood, and now we're going to go interior point. So if you're going all the way to Calc 3, we'll talk about higher dimensional neighborhoods. And the good news is, if you look at the way this is formulated, 
if we put an n dimensional right here, then you're dealing with vectors. And what does the, if x and y are vectors, what is x minus y with those? Well, x minus y is a vector, but what do those vertical bars mean in, in vectors? Magnitude. magnitude. So this will be the magnitude of a vector is less than some number. So this will be everything close to the n dimensional point x. So in three dimensions, it's a sphere centered at x. In four dimensions, you could just say it's a sphere centered at x. Um, but we don't need to worry about that. We just have numbers. So we're just subtracting two numbers, taking the absolute value. All right, interior point, it's sort of like boundary point, except instead of any neighborhood has a point that's not, at least one point that's not in the domain, this one is going to be, there is at least one neighborhood that's entirely contained inside the domain. So it's an interior point of y equals f of x is any x in the domain of f. And there exists a neighborhood around x, which is b x epsilon such such that b x epsilon, this neighborhood is contained contained inside the domain of f. So I don't think I've said use the symbol for uh, subset this quarter. So I'll write that down in blue. So that is subset in a Venn diagram. If you have A is a subset of B, the Venn diagram oh, looks like a donut. You have A is the bigger set, and then, oh, let's, let's go the opposite. So B is the big set, and then this says A, everything inside A is also inside B. In set notation, A subset B means any X in A, then X also has to be inside of B. So any element of the A set has to be inside the B set. So we'll look back at our what we just drew on that number line earlier to build up our intuition. So why did I use the word there exists instead of any? So we agreed that these green points should be interior. I'm going to draw a neighborhood around the, let's do the one on the right. So there's a neighborhood. That's epsilon, and the other one is epsilon. But I made my epsilon too big. So I can't say for any neighborhood it's inside the domain. I just made neighborhoods too big. So all you have to do is say there exists at least one neighborhood that's completely inside. You can always build, well, unless your domain is all real numbers, you can always build a huge neighborhood that's going to be outside. So that's why we say uh, there exists instead of any. And with the boundary point, we had to say any neighborhood because what I didn't want to happen is, again, this same green point we just looked at, you can use that exact neighborhood I had up there. Hey, look, I found a neighborhood that's outside. But that doesn't mean it's an exterior point. So that's why the use of any uh, compared to at least there is one is very important.
the good news is you won't need to be using these um, technical definitions. You can use intuition and just think about battery point versus interior point. So I'm not going to put a box around these definitions. If you want to major in math, then these definitions will be a little more important, but most of you are probably science, business, engineering types, so we won't need to worry too much about the definition, just the intuition. Venn diagrams are useful overall, lots of places though. All right, so we got those definitions out of the way. We'll talk about left endpoint versus a right endpoint. So x in the domain of f is a left endpoint if So would you like to call 0 or 4 a left endpoint? Let's go with 0. It's on the left side. So if we call 0 a left endpoint, what property does 0 have that 4 doesn't have? Cuz we're about to talk about right endpoints, of course. So what property separates 0 from 4? We can think about neighborhoods. What's the difference between the neighborhood around zero and the neighborhood around four and the way they relate to our domain? So let's look right at zero. What happens if I look to the left of zero? I'm not in the domain anymore. So if we look at zero, what we're going to do is basically build a half neighborhood around it. And say if the left half of the neighborhood is the part that's outside, we have a left endpoint. Uh, whereas if we look at four, we will look at the right half of that neighborhood. So x is the left endpoint if, and we'll write this out. I'll draw a picture right here. We got x, and this amount we're going to go over, we'll use epsilon for that. So that number is x minus epsilon. So we got x to x minus epsilon. Or I, should, I can write the interval. So this interval has points not in the domain of f. So we just took basically half the neighborhood, the left half of the neighborhood. And we'll do the same thing for right endpoint. 